Hey there, in this video, we'll be talking about great documentation practices. So that way, as a technical writer, you can look good at what you do and ideally level up your game, get a higher salary, and have a great career. And it's hard, it takes a lot of work to understand the different processes, to be able to work with different departments like customer support, and take on the different types of audiences, whether that be end users, administrators, colleagues. And all this work is key for creating great documentation, and you need to make it clear, searchable, and helpful for the target audience. Technical documentation requires years of experience to get right, especially for complex fields like industrial, medical science, and other similar industries, which is a reason it's required to follow good documentation practices, and also why many technical writers make over six figures. It's very important to highlight the differences between the best practices for technical writing and good documentation. And before we jump in, my name is Josh Fector. I'm the founder of Technical Writer HQ, and I have over 10 years of technical writing experience. And this is what I'm going to cover in the video, the fundamentals of good documentation practices. But before we fully dive into the topic, hit that subscribe button and activate the notification so you don't miss any of our future videos to help you become a better technical writer just like this one. Now let's go ahead and jump in. Technical documentation encompasses a wide range of document types ranging from day-to-day -day business short communications to larger documentation such as books or user guides. As you can see in this image, the spectrum is big and serves specific audiences with specific purposes and objectives. Now, if you create great documentation, it's because you've done a great job at the documentation practice of audience analysis. If you get audience analysis right, then you're more likely to hit that light bulb moment. What is the light bulb moment? This is a moment that any technical communicator ought to live for because it's when a light bulb goes off in a reader or learner's head and that reader goes from being baffled and confused to thinking, so that's how it works, I get it now. We'll cover the audience analysis learning curve so you can understand how you can get that moment to your readers. This is a curve you should keep in the back of your mind every time you write, create a video tutorial, or do any other type of documentation that you're tasked with doing. Essentially, this curve defines how much effort you should put into your documentation. At some point, the marginal difference only hurts your outcome rather than supports it, and you only have so much time to create documentation at your company. So there's always an opportunity cost, and this curve will help you understand that so you can get your work done on time and set good expectations for your deliverables. There are four types of audiences to identify in your documentation practice. When you're creating your audience analysis learning curve, it's important to note that you'll have different graphs for different readers. Here are the four types of audiences that may read your documentation. We have experts who give advice, managers who make decisions and plans, operators who follow instructions, and the general audience who are readers for information only. Because of the different audiences, not everyone that reads your documentation will enjoy it or even come away with important takeaways. You need to do your best to cater your documentation to the major stakeholders while trying not to exclude everyone else. Depending on your audience, they may need more proof about your conclusion rather than less. Although good documentation practices are not to be confused with best practices for technical writers, it serves good to remember that the quality of technical writing is judged by clarity, accuracy, comprehensiveness, accessibility, conciseness, professional appearance, and correctness, and must follow these five key principles to fulfill quality standards. So it should have a clear purpose, which is to inform or to persuade, audience-focused, which always considers its background, concerns, needs, attitude towards the purpose. Concise content, content specific directed to the audience, clearly written, appropriate language, use of active voice, visually attractive, good page design and use of graphs and charts, and most important, to be ethical, truthful, full disclosure without plagiarizing any content from other authors. Now let's talk about GDOCP. This is an industry-recognized technical documentation creation, maintenance, and development standard. And it follows a specific method of developing documentation. It can't be put under the general best practices of technical documentation. 
It takes into account a very specific list of standards that need to be met by whoever's developing the documentation. It's widely used in the pharmaceutical industry and in the medical devices industry, but can overlap with other industries. When this documentation is to be published, a GDOCP checklist requirements needs to be followed to meet industry standards. Otherwise, this technical documentation would not be approved and official. This initial good documentation practice was based on the acronym ALCOA, which now has been abbreviated into ALCOA-C. They stand for Attributable, Eligible, Original, Contemporaneous, Accurate, and Complete. All of the elements must be applied to both paper and electronic source data and the records that hold that data. Serving as evidence of the events that took place during a study, source documents need to paint the full picture of what happened. Using Alcoa C as a guide to collecting quality data can help, uh, can help justify the application of a procedure that it is safe and effective. Let's break down each element. Attributable, the first principle that states that all documentation should be immediately identifiable and attributable. That means it should immediately be able to see who created, recorded, and developed it. Furthermore, it also includes any precautions that have been taken against the forgery and also falsification of those details. Legible, the second principle is about putting into work great technical writing skills and abilities. That means that writing should have a strong command of the sentence structure, tone, grammar, and format. Therefore, all the stored documentation needs to be completely legible and easy to understand. The more decipherable and unobscured it is, the better. The idea is to develop documentation for the common person. As a result, anyone who decides to read up on the documentation can easily understand all aspects of it to the point where they can relay the information forward. Original. We can link this principle to ethics and confidentiality as it's absolutely crucial to maintain the originality of the documentation. This means it's mandatory to have original copies of the documentation in the computer systems. It helps improve the confidentiality and guarantee the accuracy of the documentation. Photocopies and printouts can still be used, but the original copy must remain in the system. And it's crucial for it to be contemporaneous. All the documentation should demonstrate contemporaneous record keeping. That means all the relevant documents need to be accurately data and timestamped when they're created, developed, published, and updated. This is a tedious process that not a lot of people like to do, but it's very important in order to store documents properly and find the documents you need. As a result, the entire history of the document design, development, testing, production, and decision-making process will always be available. It makes all the relevant information regarding end products completely traceable. Therefore, auditing and updating documents can easily be carried out. And then we have accuracy and maintaining data integrity, which is one of the most critical aspects of technical documentation. All the processes and procedures that go into the recording, development, and storing of the documentation need to be straightforward, accurate, and precise. They have to be designed to ensure and maximize accuracy and reliability. Usually there are second person checks to see if the data is accurate. It's especially needed when there is a lot of raw data and it needs validation. The final principle is to have the entirety of the process and documentation noted down. So it needs to be complete. That means maintenance and storage of all the required documentation should be top notch and well structured so that it encompasses the entirety of the process. And extra attention must be taken for data integrity. The data in the documentation can and must not be altered, modified, or erased once it is entered or recorded. In any case, you change or remove the data, you need to make sure that appropriate permissions from the stakeholders have been granted. Every single part of the document should be secured, protected, and stored in backup data systems. It's best to have cloud-based systems so access to the document can be available at any time. And cloud-based systems have really become the norm today. If you're not using a cloud-based system, then it's gonna be very hard to organize all your documentation. Furthermore, signature forging shouldn't be possible, especially because of the FDA's ESER regulations. In any case, all the technical documentation should be absolutely complete, including the data, procedures, and backups according to good documentation practices. By complying with the aforementioned principles, we can ensure data integrity, which is the overall accuracy, completeness, and consistency of the data. When the data integrity is secure, the information stored in a database will remain complete, accurate, and reliable no matter how long it's stored 
or how often it's accessed, as well as it ensures that the data is safe from any third party. And if all the data in your documentation is safe, you got great documentation. Now here are the parts of the GDOC-P that are applicable in all cases. You have document creation. All documentation creation should be absolutely accurate and legible. It should also be timely. That means it should be up to date with any recent updates and occasions. And oftentimes when a company releases a new feature, you may have hundreds of pieces of documentation that need to be updated in order to reflect that. And most importantly, all the data used during the documentation creation should be verified on all fronts. And then we have the documentation review cycle to help with this. Every document that is part of the technical documentation should be reviewed multiple times by various stakeholders. Depending on the company, you may not have the time to verify to the 10th degree, but you have to put a good foot forward to at least verify it to a large extent. And then we have documentation maintenance. So technical documentation needs to be maintained to stay relevant. So again, updating your documentation as new things happen in your company. To do that, you have to regularly review documents to make sure they're relevant. And in order to do that, they have to be well categorized and kept within a structure that they can be easily accessible. And that's why a lot of companies use internal and external knowledge bases today to do just that. And then we have documentation modifications. You need to keep a record of and maintain all the audit trails, including the reasons for modifications. And furthermore, the documentation needs to have administrative controls of the modification process and the reasons behind the modifications. Understanding and adhering to good documentation practices ensures regulation compliance and process correctness. The next documentation practice I wanna mention is using tables effectively. Tables are those rows and columns of numbers and words, mostly numbers. They permit rapid access to and relatively easy comparison of information. If the data is arranged chronologically, for example, sales figures over a 10 year period, the table can show trends, patterns of rising or falling activity. The biggest use of tables is for numerical data. Imagine that you are comparing different models of laser printers in terms of physical characteristics, such as height, depth, length, weight, and so on. That's perfect for a table. Whenever you have situations where you discuss several things, about which you provide the same categories of detail, you've got a possibility for a table. For example, imagine that you were comparing several pricing models for your software. You'd be saying the same category of things about each printer, its unique features, common features, quality of support, and so on. So introduce your tables by telling the reader the point, what the table does for them. If the table shows some relationship, explicitly tell the reader the relationship to look for. Just a quick warning here, do not use tables that lack a point though. Never dump a table of data on the reader without telling the point. Here's an example of a good use of tables to make a list more digestible. In order to understand it, let's take a look at the poor list. Follow these two steps to dial in the recurring Zoom meeting. Call the number on your Zoom calendar invite. So we have A, your cell phone, dial 123, 123, 4, 5, 6, 7. B, any other device, dial 188, 555, 5678. Access your account A for cell phones, press message key, B for other devices, press the hash number, then input your PIN. Let's turn this into a good table. It now says follow these two steps to dial in to the recurring Zoom meeting. As you can see, the table makes information much more easily digestible for the audience. It only takes a second to understand. And when it was written out before, you'd have to process it and it could take maybe 10 times as long to understand. We also have using words that engage the five senses, such as contact your representative, should be contact customer support, email the support team at support at acmecorp.com, much more specific. Use measurements of time, recently should be more specific, in the fourth quarter, ASAP, COB, which is close of business, Friday, 5.30 p.m. Being more specific makes it more tangible, and use numbers, several, numerous, various, a number, of, those are all very vague. Say at least three or just be more specific. Avoid vague adjectives. X is a very dangerous product strategy. Now let's make that more specific. X can cause our company to lose 100 million in revenue. Another common example is people say based on. This is not useful at all. Did we make this using client requirements or citing client requirements? 
Every time you see based on, avoid it. Be specific. For example, don't say we well, recently bought a new software suite because recently may mean last quarter, last month. The older the document, the worse the word becomes. So based on a recently are two of those words that you should do all you can in your power to avoid because people can misinterpret a lot of your documentation when you use them. Good documentation practices protect the author from all forms of unforeseen issues. They protect the organization, personnel, and users. Most importantly, they help you stay compliant with state and federal laws and regulations. Using bad language can get your company into a lot of trouble legally and often has put companies in positions where they've lost tons of money. So by having good documentation, you can reduce compliance risk. So make sure to have data backups and to develop technical documentation for the organization that can easily be found. And there we have it. We just covered great documentation practices that you can use to level up your technical writing game. And if you're looking to take your technical writing game a step further, make sure to go ahead and check out our certification courses on Technical Writer HQ. And with that said, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like it and subscribe to our channel. And I wish you the best in your career journey as a technical writer. And I'll see you on some of our other videos. Cheers.